Hello everyone, I'm Jawad Hock. I work with Dr. Greg Earhart at the University of Kentucky. I've been part of the team that analyzed the recent decline in transit ridership in the US since 2012 to 2018. The results have been published as TCRP report 231. Uh, in this presentation, I'll be giving a brief overview of the results, going into a bit of detail on multi-city analysis. The research starts from the observation that public transit ridership in the US has been increasing through the Great Recession until 2014. After that point, ridership has been on the de sharp decline. This decline is widespread and it came at a period of economic growth which is quite opposite to what other countries have experienced all over the world. If we segment it by modes, we can see that bus ridership have been on a downward trend since 2006, but after 2012, it has decreased by almost 15%. Rail ridership, on the other hand, started declining from 2014 and declined by about four to 6%, depending on the metro area across the United States. And it is not like the transit service supply has decreased, as we have, as you can see from the vehicle revenue miles plot. For buses, it has been increasing since 2012. For rail, it has been increasing throughout the years, with more and more service being added to the network. There are several hypotheses posed as to the reason of this decline. There could be an effect of service cuts higher income and higher car ownership may be having an effect, fare increase, aging population, gas prices, those all have different effects on transit ridership. This could also be an effect of the ride health services. To estimate these effects, we compiled the annual ridership and demographic data for 215 metropolitan statistical areas across the United States. We estimated the sensitivity of each factor using 2012 to 2018 data on all MSS except New York, because New York by itself has a huge share of the total ridership in the United States. We then multiplied the estimated elasticities by the observed changes to get how much each factor have affected the change in ridership. In the last step, we validated our model against 20, 2002 to 2011 data and for New York. According to our analysis, two factors contributed most to the net increase in transit ridership. The first of all is added service. During these years, bus, bus have increased, rider, increased service by 5.5% by adding new routes, new adding frequency. This has caused an increase of 3% in bus ridership and 10% on rail ridership. During these same years, population and employment have grown, so did number of people living in the transit supportive densities. This has caused a positive 1.4% increase in ridership. However, the positive effects are offset by several other factors. Four factors have contributed to the net decrease. First of all was income and household characteristics. Median income of households have increased over this time car ownership have increased and the number of people working from home have increased as well. This has caused a decrease of two negative, caused a decline of 2% uh, in public transit ridership. Moreover, transit travel became more expensive with added fare, bus fare increased by 5.5% and rail fares increased by 10.7% in these two years. This has affected negative 6% change in bus ridership and cause a decline of 2.6% on rail ridership. In addition, driving has also become less expensive with falling gas prices from an average of $4 per gallon to $2.85 per gallon. This has caused decrease in ridership by 4%. Another significant effect is the effect of the new modes that compete with bus. Ride health services, make people switch from transit to auto because they are so convenient. It has a negative 10% uh, effect on bus ridership. Its effect on rails are different based on the metro area characteristics. 
in large areas where transit is ingrained into the travel characteristics. Um, ride hail actually may enable the first and last mile connectivity, increasing the ridership, but that effect is not statistically significant. It, however, has a negative 10% effect on MSS with mid-sized transit operators. Bike share has a positive effect, e-scooters have a negative effect, but these effects are not statistically significant since they occupy only the later part of our study period. If we plot them up, we can see the green shaded regions are the ones, are the positive impact to the changes in each of these variables and green one, and the red ones are the negative impacts. We can see that for buses, service has the highest positive impact and the negative impacts were all from gas prices and the new competing modes. For rails, the positive impact was due to added service and negative impact was due to the gas prices. Moreover, it has a, a small impact on the new competing modes. On our report that has been published very recently, we also include route level analysis, which determines the impact of shared e scooters in Louisville, Kentucky, impact of free fare promotions, and the impact of BRT. Third part of our research is top level analysis, where we determine the impact of service change disruption and LRT and BRT on ridership. On the last part, using Maxim and CityCast, we compared the ridership changes because of increasing service to low income areas or high in ridership routes. So what we learned from here is that added service equals to added ridership Redesigned bus network to serve lower income population has also increased ridership. Strategic fare discounts for kids, seniors, and veterans have a positive impact on ridership as well. We also found that when transit is given priority in the road network, that increases ridership as evident from higher ridership on the LRT and BRT lines, in addition to the bus only lanes. We also found that it is probably for the benefit of the city that agencies partner with new mobility providers because ride hail reduced ridership significantly. So it should be explored how ride, ride hail could be used in tandem uh, with the transit services. With that vision, the T-score center starts to produce a sustainable and resilient future for transit and to equip local agencies with tools needed to translate their vision into their own community. Possible strategies are transit as a social service. Uh, as we found from the COVID pandemic that transit riders in the low income areas and the essential worker areas are not changing, they're still using transit. So maybe it's time we looked at transit as a social service rather than a revenue generating machine. We can also consider consolidating transit routes into high volume capacity constraint corridors, exploring integrated on-demand transit to the network and pricing incentives. Moreover, we can also investigate the COVID-19 recovery strategy. Thank you.